Hello and welcome to the second part of my tutorial in programming Evolver. Now if you haven't seen the first part, I suggest you go and watch that. Same with the introduction video, there's some useful information contained within them. Now in this video I want to go through how to create evolving sequences based upon user samples. So this is great for atmospheres and such like. So we're going to start off by creating a new project. So hit the new button, give your project a name, in this case single sample. Press OK, confirm. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is ensure lane A is selected because we're going to create the sequence inside lane A. Now if you press the notes tab and change the sequencer length to 4 and then head off to the timings tab and just ensure that uh, the speed multiplier is all the way up for now. Now we change the sequencer length to 4 because I'm going to load in 4 different samples into S1, S2, S3 and S4 and map those to the first 4 elements of our sequence. So you just want to make sure that each of the 4 elements are matched up to S1, 2, 3 and 4. Now click back on the first element of our sequence and click single sample and the sample pull down log will come up allowing us to pick and um, preview a sample. When we found one of interest we can load that sample into S1. We can select the second element of our sequence and go and pick another sample. Now I'm going to pick a variety of samples from different sample groups, a couple from the atmosphere section, a couple from impact maybe, maybe one from sound effects, I don't know, we'll see. And uh, I think variety is the key here, it makes it sound better, you've got a more dramatic difference between the individual samples that way. Uh, the important thing to note here is a sample dialog window, sample pull window, you can drag and drop from the files app directly into here. You can create folders, you can move samples around, so you can use this as a way to organise your samples. Now once we've loaded our four samples into S1 to 4, the first thing we're going to want to do is enable the uh, sample preview button and listen to see what the respective volumes are like and make any necessary changes. The second thing we're going to want to do is press the edit sample button and actually set some loop points on these because right now there is none. So inside this edit dialog you need to enable the loop mode and set decent start and end loop points and enable the crossfade. Now as long as the audition sample button is enabled you can press a key and listen. Now we're going to have to repeat that process for all four samples but if we look at this second sample you can see there's a big attack time on this one and it's a good idea to go into crop mode and actually move the start point of the sample in a little just so that it, we don't start in a, an area of, of silence. So now you can hear as I press the key uh, the notes, the sound starts immediately. Now we just repeat this process for all four samples just so that we, we have a, a reasonable amount of sample there for us to actually play. It might not matter if these samples are long enough, but in reality um, it's always good practice to put loop points in there. Plus loop points eliminate the click that you might get when you hit the end of a sample. Now Evolver does ship with a few basic samples and these, some of these samples are used in the default performances. But you can add your own by dragging and dropping from the files app. So now we can disable the audition sample option and listen to how it sounds. Now these transitions are still happening too fast for me and if we look at the timings tab we've already turned the speed multiplier all the way up. So although we haven't touched on the timing lane before we're going to reduce the number of elements in the timing lane to two. You'll notice both of those elements are yellow and if you look at the guide at the bottom they're set to quarter notes. I'm going to change them both to half notes and that will mean that they'll last twice as long.
Okay, that sounds pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Now, because we started with a new patch, we really need to save our performance. So just pick the save button, pick performance, give it a name, done. Now, because we made changes to one line, it's also possible to save this as a program. And if you remember from the previous example, we actually created a performance by loading multiple programs, a program being a single lane. Now, in this last example, we touched on the timing lane, and I want to take a look at that again now in more detail. So with lane A selected, I'm going to load a default program into this slot. And to demonstrate how the timing lane is useful, we're going to load swinging string chords. Now you'll notice we got all that from just two notes. But if we switch to the timing tab, you'll notice the timing sequence reveals all. If you flick through the individual notes of this timing sequence, you'll notice that we're using sixteenths and eighth notes to create that uh, rhythmic pattern. Now, the most observant of you out there will have noticed that these aren't really sixteenths and eighth notes in a musical sense. Um, the speed uh, multiplier is currently set to H, which complicates matters. But you can think of the colour coding as giving a bearing on the length of one note in proportion to another. It's also worth noting the latch button in here, and if that's enabled, whenever I play, play a chord and release the notes, the chord keeps on playing until I hit a new chord, or I press the latch button again, which then unlatches those notes. On the right hand side of this dialog, you'll see a supported latch option, which means that this layer supports latching. You can actually specify that per layer. Uh, another thing we haven't talked about up to now is key zones. And we have a few default performances that utilize key zones. And when you select one of them, like Walkabout Creek, you'll notice a dialog appears telling us that layer C has a key zone starting at C5. Now, if we select layer C and then scroll down to key zones, we can confirm that. Now, as you can see, it's possible to create drum sequences and have them latch in certain key zones which makes, it, makes these two functions work very well together. Now we can not only define the start and end of a particular layer, we can also define the MIDI channel and we can define the velocity start and end which triggers the layer. Now the final thing I've been avoiding all this time is envelopes, i.e. ADSR, VCF, LFO, terms we all know and love from traditional synthesizers. And these are available here with one big difference. And that is that each lane has its own set of LFO, ADSR and VCF. But also because each lane can have up to 16 samples, each sample can have its own ADSR, VCF, LFO and so on. Now by default the VCF is off. Um, and what we can do, we can turn it on, we can enable it on a lane or sample basis. So as you can see here, I can actually enable it for the lane or for the sample. Now if the sample button is selected, you'll notice that changing the source sample S1 to 16 uh, changes the settings within the VCF. And the same is true for the ADSR and the LFO. Now on the surface this seems like a complicated arrangement but it's the most flexible. It means that we can look at we can change these parameters for the underlying multi-sample and we can change them for the lane. And obviously being able to control, especially when we're having a, a sequence of multiple multi-samples, we need to control that envelope that goes over the top of the whole lot. So in the main you're going to be dealing with lane envelopes, not so much sample. So I think that just about covers this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.